Okay, let's do part 6.3 of lab 20. Uh, so this is making a negative power supply from a positive power supply. This is kind of a neat trick. It sort of, it hints at how a switching power supply works, which is also called a DC-DC converter. Uh, so we, in this case, we are not using any negative power supply. So this pin 14 that normally connects to minus 9 volts, or whatever your negative power supply is, is not connected to minus 9 volts. So we're not using the minus 9 volt supply at all. The negative power that goes into pin 14 actually comes back from itself. So it's like powering itself. I mean, you know, it's, it's providing its own negative uh, voltage so that you see that, uh, uh, that there is no there is no voltage in this circuit. There's no external voltage in this circuit that is smaller than zero. So uh, what we're using the analog switch to do here, so, so uh, we have this uh, clock signal, which is periodically driving back and forth both of the analog switches between their two states. We're using the entire DG403 chip here. Um, and so what we're doing is uh, when you uh, when you close okay so so you have both these this is closed and these are open and you go back and forth and then these are closed and these are open so let's say that uh, switches one and two are closed and switches three and four are open so if switches one and two are closed then this capacitor gets a so there's a, uh, the bottom of the capacitor is connected to ground, and the top of the capacitor is connected to plus 9. Then, an instant later, uh, well, I guess, uh, whatever, half a period of our 10, 20, whatever kilohertz clock, half a period later, uh, we connect the top of the capacitor to ground. So then what's happening at the bottom of the capacitor? Well, we put enough charge on this capacitor if there's a voltage difference between the two plates. So if you sort of instantaneously change the top plate from plus 9 to 0, then the bottom plate goes from 0 to minus 9. So that's kind of the neat trick. So, uh, you know, you open these, close these, and uh, put enough charge in this capacitor that the top plate is 9 volts above the bottom plate. And then you open these, close these, and you say, OK, I'm going to put the top plate at 0, so the bottom plate must be at minus 9. So that's kind of a neat trick. It's like a flying capacitor. The capacitor, you know, you, uh, you charge it up, and then you disconnect it, and you kind of float it down, and you connect this. And you know, lo and behold, this point is a negative voltage. So that's kind of a neat trick. Now, Tom's circuit diagram draws the one microfarad capacitors as if they were polarized, pol polarized as if they were electrolytic capacitors. Turns out the one microfarad capacitors in your kit are nylon capacitors that are not polarized, so it doesn't make any difference which way you plug in the capacitor. So I, I drew the capacitors the way Tom drew them, but that uh, I think it's not necessary. So. I don't know if there's anything really special that needs to be pointed out. Tom's circuit diagram did not explicitly tell you which parts of the DG403 to use. I think he wanted you to figure it out for yourself. Uh, I figured it out for you. So I put uh, source and drain numbers here, and I put uh, pin numbers also. Uh, I didn't write down pins. 13, 12, and 11. Those are used in the conventional way. So ground plus 5 and plus 9 are used in the same way we've been using them in the last few labs. So uh, I guess I'll show you how this is wired up. I think I'll just go pin by pin around the chip. Maybe that makes sense. Uh, OK, so pin 1 uh, should be connected to pin 4 and to this capacitor. So pin 1 is connected to pin 4 with this blue jumper. And 
it goes to one side of this capacitor. So the other side of this capacitor then goes with this other blue jumper over to pin 5, and then there's another jumper taking pin 5 over to pin 8. Uh, okay, pin 2 is not used. Pin 3 goes to ground, so there's this little black wire taking pin 3 to ground. Pin 4 goes to pin 1. I guess we just talked about pin 4. So pin 4 goes back to pin 1 with this little jump. Uh, where is it? Where is it? This pin 4 goes back to pin 1. Yeah, with this blue wire right here. And uh, pin 5 goes to pin 8 and also to that one microfarad capacitor. So pin 5 goes to pin 8 with this wire. And then it also goes to that capacitor, which you put on the left side. And then uh, pin 6 goes to pin 14 because it's providing its own negative voltage. So you can see, uh, I think I used this red wire for that. Yeah. So you see this red wire used to go down here to minus 9, but now I mean, from, from pin 14. Instead, it goes back to pin 6. So, it, so it's providing its own negative power. So this red wire goes from uh, pin 6, which is the circuit's output, back to pin 14, which is the circuit's own negative power supply input. Uh, and then there is another capacitor uh, from pin 6 to ground. So I had to put it over on the right-hand side. So then I have a little jumper wire from pin 6 over to the left side of this capacitor. And I have this little black wire from the right side of this capacitor down to ground. Pin 7 is unused. Pin 8, uh, we kind of talked about already because it, we connected it to pin 5. Pin 9 uh, goes to ground. So you can see this pretty long wire, black wire, to connecting pin 9 to ground. Pin 10 is connected to pin 15. So pins 10 and 15 are connected together by this blue wire. And then uh, pin 15 is connected to uh, function generator channel 1, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, so that is our clock signal, which is telling this thing to switch back and forth between the two modes of operation. Uh, let's see, so pin, okay, pin 11, 12, 13. 11 is plus 9 volts as usual, so that's there. Uh, pin 12 is plus 5 volts, as we've been doing in this lab. Pin 13 is ground, uh, which is, let's see, this, oh yeah, this, so there's a long black wire that brings pin 13 down to this blue stripe on the bottom for ground. Pin 14, again, is providing, it, the circuit is, very ingeniously providing its own minus 9 volts. Pin 15, we talked about, is connected to pin 10 and to the AWG. And pin 16 is, uh, ah, pin 16 is our DC input. So that's coming in. Pin 16, C is coming in from plus 9. So that's this uh, red wire up here. So basically providing the input plus 9 volts. And then there's also a uh, tenth of a microfarad, 100 nanofarad capacitor to ground. So uh, yeah, this black wire is the ground for that capacitor. OK, and then let me show you that it seems to work. Uh, OK, so the yellow trace here is scope channel 1. It seems to be minus 9 volts. And then I can even show you, if I try to put a load, so this is a this is a 1K resistor. Oh, you can't see it. Let me see. Here. So this is a 1K resistor, and it's just floating. So one end of it is connected indirectly to pin 6. The other end is, is not, is just floating. If I connect it to ground, okay, right, so, so it's right here. So if I connect it to ground, then I'll draw a little bit of current from this negative power supply. And you can see, connecting a 1K resistor, which should flow, what, like 9 milliamps, uh, it brings my minus, my minus 9 volts down to minus 7 volts. So you can see, uh, I guess you could, from that, estimate the, the uh, 7 in resistance. Uh, it must be like several kilo ohms. So 
Uh, you can see this thing doesn't really want to supply more than, I don't know, 10 or so milliamps. But anyway, it's kind of, uh, it does supply some, some uh, finite current though, so that's kind of neat to see. This blue cyan trace here is my clock. So the clock signal, uh, this is one millisecond per division. I think I have 20 kilohertz. Let me go to uh, like 10 microseconds per division. Yeah, and then you, here you can see that, <clears throat> okay, you can see the clock signal. And if I go to wave gen, you see I have my, oh, oh, sorry, it's 50 kilohertz. Okay, so I have this 50 kilohertz clock signal. Uh, I just chose as the first note, it's, you know, Tom said somewhere in the 10 to 100 kilohertz range. Um, yeah, I actually don't remember right now the trade-offs in choosing the clock frequency. Uh, it may be that if you vary the clock frequency, you can get a slightly different uh, maximum current out of this. I haven't thought about it. Okay, and then for power supplies, I wanted to make sure that we did not have the minus 9 volts even powered up. So I made sure this VP minus is off. So we're using the plus 5 and the plus 9. We're not using the minus 9 at all. And again, if you look at the wave gen, it goes between 0 and 5. There's no negative voltage. So there's no negative voltage anywhere in this system except at the output. Uh, so that kind of makes its working uh, seem even more remarkable. OK, so anyway, that's pretty cool, right? So we got minus 9 volts out of plus 9 volts. That's, that's kind of a neat trick. So, and uh, it, it is kind of a hint at how a thing called a switching power supply, a DC-DC converter, uh, works. OK, so that was part 6.3 of Lab 20. There's only one part left. I'll do that in the next video.